welcome to another up close video. Today's one is for Tonic Showcase number 17, which is called the Cuckoo Clock Gift Box, um, and it creates a fantastic little box that has the sort of feel of a cuckoo clock about it. You even have the ability to add like the bits that dangle down the bottom of a cuckoo clock as well. Um, and I actually had an idea to sort of change up the theme of the cuckoo clock as well. So I've got like um, a wintry little house without being an actual cuckoo clock and then I've got um, a beach hut cuckoo clock as well that actually has little lifesavers hanging out of the bottom of it and then I've also got all of the bits and pieces ready to put together a more traditional looking cuckoo clock as well so at the end of the video there will be a construction too so I don't want to waffle on too much about the dies so that the video is not too like crazily long and I've also done my usual thing of turning three-dimensional box dies into just gorgeous little dies that you can use on your cards. So my sped up video is creating a couple of cards that actually match um, a couple of the cuckoo clock boxes that I've made as well. So um, that should be up tomorrow too, the little sped up video. So with the showcases you get them in an A4 storage wallet that fits inside Tonic's large uh, die storage folders and you also get them on their magnetic sheet already as well they do actually come on the acetate um, but you get the magnetic sheet in there um, I've just been leaving them on the acetate for now but the great thing about actually having the magnetic sheet too is if you have that magnetic crafters die stand that I was showing you during the cyber week some of the sets in that um, you can actually just put your magnetic sheet onto that as well if you don't want to have to try and um, you know take all of the dies off your sheet, put them on that and then put them back again at the end of the day. You can actually just put the magnetic sheet on that as well. So um, I love that you get them with the magnetic sheet and they're great, they're just perfect to store away straight away as well. So um, you can see there is a lovely selection of dies in here and I will run through the bits and pieces you need to make the cuckoo clock properly when I do the construction. But the main pieces are this piece that you'll need two of these and then this piece which you'll also need two of but on one of them you don't really need this bottom portion and then you'll also need at least one of these pieces to cover up the kind of closure mechanism that goes on the top and give you like that um, roof tile sort of bit in the centre what's it called? Edge, edge tile? something like that um, to go across the, the top of the apex of the roof to kind of... Um, hide the opening and closing. You can just use one of these to do that. Um, I quite like cutting two of them actually and having a second layer just underneath it as well. Um, and on my beach hut version I actually cut five of these, used one in the middle and cut the other four in half and then had four of them going down each side of the roof as well. Um, so you need that, basically those are the dies that you need to create the actual box. And then you have lots of the sort of decorative pieces that can go on it as well. So you've got the main little outside edge for the cuckoo clock, which is perfect for your cards and adding a cuckoo clock onto your, the front of your cards. And then you have different designs that will fit inside this as well. So you have got these two main designs here, which both have an aperture for your little cuckoo clock window as well and this one actually has a fancy edge it's got like extra little bits I didn't cut this one out in the end I used this one twice for the card and the box um, but this one just cuts out the actual aperture there and this one leaves a solid circle yeah leaves a solid circle um, in the center for you to put your clock face on and you can also embellish it with another couple of dies as well and this one leaves um, a sort of space within that decorative design to put your um, clock face on and you also get extra dies on the set that sort of builds up the clock face for this one as well then as well as um, that you might be thinking well there's no design at the top of these you actually get two options for this as well so you can mix and match them too so you've got this one with more little vertical lines and a little bit of sort of foliage at the top and then this one's got sort of horizontal lines and a little heart right in the center and some sort of swirls coming off of it as well so you can mix and match these either way um, you know whichever way you want to match them together you can mix and match to get lots of different options for um, decorating the front of your house as well then you also have like this sort of edging for the roof, kind of like the gutter sort of part um, that you can add on to here, kind of makes it look a little bit like a gingerbread house having that piece but it also, um, I suppose, 
draws your eye away from the edge of the roof because that's kind of where the box opens so it's kind of like um, a little extra piece to add a bit of extra decoration and kind of disguise um, or draw your eye away from the kind of roof part of it so you've got that actual solid piece and then you also have um, the detailed piece to go inside it as well which just puts holes along it as well and either look really nice so if you have it with the holes in or without the holes they both look really lovely then um, window wise you also get this little one which I think I think it might actually be the same size as the piece that falls out of there. I was using this to cut a separate colour of card to put behind the little shutter windows that you can put in these. Um, but you can just use that to cut an aperture on your card um, to do, maybe maybe you want to do a tiny little shaker behind there actually and have a little bird shaking in there rather than just sitting there for the cuckoo clock mechanism. Then you also have this little one if I can take that bit of foam off the back of it, um, that cuts you the little shutters and it doesn't cut right on these two edges. So what I was doing is I was cutting um, this decorative detail into one of these and then I cut a separate one of these, put this die cut piece over the top of it so I knew exactly where the aperture was and then place this die in the centre and cut this one into the solid piece so then the windows opened on this one and then I stuck the decorative detail on top of this solid one so that's how I was using that and you also get um, another version as well which I didn't end up using I just ended up using the little slatted one but you also get this one with a little um, sort of sprig of foliage in them as well um, and then you can use this one and just cut it in half to go behind these to back them if you don't want them to be see-through. And you can just have the little windows there to reveal the little bird inside. So obviously you need the little bird to go inside. So we've got this cute little bird which fits perfectly inside the window. He's really sweet um, and he looks off to the left because obviously the die is backwards so he does look off to the left in when he's inside there and you do also have a flying bird as well so if you don't want this to be um, a cuckoo clock you could turn it into a little bird house and have the little birds flying or my uh, beach hut kind of one I sort of made these um, as if they were kind of seagulls I know they're more of like a dove bird but they could be a, a sort of seagull um, flying around or you might get doves on the beach as well I'm not sure I don't think I've seen a dove on the beach but they could go to the beach you never know um, so a lovely little flying bird as well so you've got different options for what kind of bird you might want to put in there obviously you could actually a good idea would be put a little photograph of somebody in there as well uh, so instead of having it with the little bird in there you could have a little um, photograph of the birthday girl or something hidden behind there then for the clock faces I said before you've got like extra pieces so this one is actually um, a scalloped circle that's slightly bigger um, that mats nicely into the center of this piece because that detail in the center actually falls away so then you would stick this onto the back piece the solid piece that you've decided or even just straight onto the box if you put this decorative bit straight onto the box um, and then you have a separate circle to go inside that which I think is practically the exact same size as the circle that's left there so if you wanted a bit of dimension on that you've got the little circle to cut that out then you also have this piece here which kind of has a little crossbar in it which you could turn into a window and maybe make this into like an actual birdhouse rather than a cuckoo clock and have this as like a little window in there or turn it into like a little log cabin and that could be the window or you could use this um in, oh, let's just put it on there um, as somewhere for the little hands to go on the clock and it could be um, a funky kind of clock design pointing to the four quarters of the clock with the little cross in the centre you also have this one which can be used um, behind the clock face or you could just put the smaller set of hands uh, right in the centre of this one or you can layer the two together which I think looks really nice having them layered and this was the die that made me think to turn it into a beach hut because this looks like a kind of lifesaver ring so I did these dangling down from the bottom of uh, my beach hut version then talking of the little hands um, that can fit inside the clock we have got this little die here which actually cuts two different sizes of hands um, the large one would be pointing to three o'clock and the small ones would point to nine o'clock uh, obviously you could move them around the clock as well but that's kind of the right angle that they're pointing to um, 
and you can mix and match which ones you use so if you wanted the centre of this just to be the clock you could use the smaller hands and if you wanted this maybe to be the clock or this one or even just the scallop circle you can go for the larger um, hands on there as well and I love that they've given it to you on a little uh, plate of die so that you're not going to lose those tiny little pieces you've got the two of them together so you're less likely to lose them and then also speaking of the, the bits that um, come out the bottom, I don't know what they're called, I should have googled that before I started filming. Um, <clears throat> I'm not 100% sure what they're called, but I do think this bottom piece looks like a pine cone as well. So if you don't have any pine cone dies, you've instantly got a pine cone die in your stash now. Uh, but these are the little things that kind of dangle down at the bottom of the clock. When I think of a cuckoo clock, I think of uh, the gingerbread man. So that's my reference when I'm thinking about a cuckoo clock. I think there might be extra chains as well. I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, these are the kind of bits that can uh, come out the bottom of the clock. And you can cut the two together. And then you can also cut this one individually to get a solid backing to go behind this if you want to as well. On my card that I've done, I actually just left it um, with, you know, nothing behind it as well. And that looked really nice. Um, also, to put these little dangly bits in the bottom of the clock as well... Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see that easily, yeah I think you can actually, either side here and on the opposite side there are little notches in there and you can actually use this die and line it up with the notches to give you little slits for where those two pieces will go in. Um, I haven't actually done this yet, but the one that I've got prepped to show you I've cut these slits in so we can do that together because the... Um, beach hut one that I made I actually just poked holes in the bottom because I wanted to use baker's twine to attach um, the little lifesavers so um, I haven't actually used the slits yet but we will go through that later then um, you've also got decorative panels that can be for the side or the roof and you've actually got two different sizes as well these are actually sort of a nesting set of uh, little I think they are rectangles rather than square, but you've got like a little nesting set. So if you just love your matting and layering, you could put the two together and have that kind of effect. But you do have this gorgeous pattern that goes inside the large one. I love this kind of design with those like little puffy clouds. Um, it was sort of like um, a trellisy sort of design. Really like that one. And those little pieces that fall out are really nice to use as accents as well. Um, and then you also have this one which I will show you on the cuckoo clock that I'm going to assemble. I did a bit of inking through it, um, and then I've also got the die cuts to add onto the box as well. And this one goes in the slightly smaller rectangle, but you could put this one in the larger one and just have a larger space between the design and the outside of the rectangle as well. Or you could layer this one on top of the uh, solid, just a rectangle as well, if you want to. So that's kind of like... Uh, vertical lines or horizontal depending how you stick it on um, with like a load of foliage going between it so I guess that kind of makes it look a little bit more cabin sort of esque as well so you've got that you've also got this little one which I wasn't entirely sure um, what it's for but it's kind of got a more of like a diamond trellis design I don't know whether it's designed so you would cut it maybe like three times into a side panel or whether um, it would be like an, a different kind of fence because you have a fence that's here as well but this doesn't have outside edges to it so I would presume that they've done it so that you could cut it multiple times into here but I'm sure if you watch Tonic's video we might find out what that is actually supposed to do um, someone might have used it on their sample and we'll find out uh, the actual use for it um, but you do also have this gorgeous little picket fence as well. So really sweet little fence. Um, I love it when they include stuff like this. There's been little fences in a couple of other die sets. I can't off the top of my head remember which ones they were. But um, you know you might have some other ones that would work on this as well. And actually some of the other little house die sets. There was the little house that was the designer's choice one. And there was something else as well, but my mind's going blank at the moment. Um, but I'm sure you'll remember what other ones would go nicely with this. If I do remember, by the time I'm editing this, I'll like put them up here or link them below the video as well. Um, anything that I find that I think would work nicely with this. I love this window 
this window is just so adorable and it's a really nice sized window so this is what I actually used on my like little winter cottage kind of house um, as the windows on there but again this would mix and match to that little cottage die set and you could use the front door from the cottage onto this little box as well so um, do have a look at what other dies you have but I love this style of window and you've got the little hearts in the shutters as well so you can use those little hearts to accent different places and even the aperture of this when I was cutting it just the aperture shape looks really nice as well um, but I was also using this on my card too to kind of do a sort of new home sort of card what was that I did recently with the new home card oh that was the other box wasn't it was that a, sh a showcase as well um, and you had the stamps to go with the little house these kind of bits and pieces would work with that and you could mix and match the bits that were in there as well um, that was the other set that I was trying to think of then we have also got this gorgeous little pine tree uh, which can also be a Christmas tree as well uh, really cute and it's got like some little debossing details that will um, add extra texture to your little tree as well you could even trace that with a white gel pen if you wanted to make it look more snowy to. Um, then we also have a little selection of three flowers in three different sizes which I will be using on my one that I'm going to show you putting it together. So you've got gorgeous little flowers and I love that little cut detail that's in them as well and the smallest one is just adorable to accent any kind of bits and pieces. Then you also have oh, this little one, the little deer's head um, again, I think this is more to make it into sort of like a little log cabin or maybe a specific, a specific kind of themed cuckoo clock as well. You could have the little um, deer's head at the top like of the apex of the roof. Um, I think that'll look really sweet. I've done that on my little winter cottage. So really cute little deer head. Um, and you've actually got the deboss detail in there as well. So I did. I just left mine as it was because I cut it into dark grey. But if you cut it into craft card perhaps or um, a lighter brown cardstock, you could actually use your pen to draw in those little details if you want to. Then I think the rest of everything that I haven't shown you is just foliage, but it's some beautiful foliage though. So we've got these two that are the handedness of each other, so you can make it look symmetrical either side of the clock face if you want to, or either side of the house, depending what um, decoration you're kind of going for. But these ones are really beautiful, and then these two are my favourites. You've got both handedness of um, an ivy kind of sprig, and I think this one... It really is reminding me of the one that came in the Kaleidoscope three-sided uh, box die set years ago. Um, so it could actually be the same design, but I think it's on a smaller scale. And we've had quite a few um, different foliage kind of pieces. I'm sure there was another ivy one that I mentioned not that long ago as well. So uh, bring them all out and use them together with, um, with these ones as well to create some lovely unique kind of ivory looking designs as well. And I think these would be really nice for creating a wreath and then adding those flowers onto. So not even actually creating the box at all, just um, working on cards and using um, this to just to create a wreath too. And then you also have three tiny little leaves. So you've got this little one here, you've got the other handedness of it as well. Uh, I think these would be nice to sort of scatter down a card or if you just want to fill in a little blank place on your cuckoo clock. Um, it, don't forget these don't have to actually be leaves, they could be um, engraved in like a wooden cuckoo clock. So you could cut them out of the same colour of cardstock that you've cut the base out of and they could be like an engraved design within your cuckoo clock as well. So um, do think about that kind of way of using them too and especially like the ivy and the foliage. It doesn't have to just be foliage to go with flowers or something. It can actually be like an engraved design on your cuckoo clock. And then finally the last little one is like a little sort of maple leaf um, kind of design again with some little debossing details like these ones uh, for the veins in the leaves as well so uh, I'm just going to put all these dies back on here before I lose any of them and then I'll show you the cards that I've made the two houses that are finished and then we'll get on with the construction as well so this is the little like winter cabin that I made and I've just used some of these trellis panels on the side and I wanted it to match around the front so I've just used one and cut edges off of it to put on the front and the back of it as well. I did it kind of double sided so you could sort of turn this into an ornament if you wanted to. This could be like a little decoration hanging on a Christmas tree or it could just be up on the side. Um, I wanted to do something a little bit sort of wintry sort of themed and then you've actually got this like little roof tile um, or 
edge stone kind of piece going across the top of the roof and it is attached on one side but not the other because this is how the box opens so if I just look at which direction these go in um, this is how the box opens these two little pieces clip um, inside each other um, and I've just attached that top roof piece to one of them so that when they go together they hide the join um, like that as well. Um, for the top of the roof actually, the decoration on here, I had one left, I'd cut five of these and I had one left and I wanted to decorate the roof with it as well so I decided to just rip it. I just ripped it down the centre put this along the top lining it up with the roof and then just added extra of the pieces that came out of it sort of um, floating down from that ripped edge and I think that looks really lovely and then um, for the main focus of this one I've just done the windows on the back and the front I've done the little fences on there which I did actually double all the fences up um, so they're a little bit thicker with a, a couple of layers of card and then I've got those gorgeous little trees some of them I snipped the bottom down on them so that they'd be a little bit shorter as well and I've just tucked them all the way around and then used that little stag's head on the top of it so really really cute little sort of winter cottagey kind of feel and then I thought well I might as well make a matching card to go with it as well so that is the front um, and then we've got the little matching card design to go with it too so I've used three more of those little sort of trellis panels in the background some of the extra bits that f uh, fall out of that the window again, the little fence again, um, three of the trees and then a little with love stamped sentiment which is from this sweet and simple sentiments stamp set that's on Tonic's website really really useful, I love this set um, so great for adding any sentiments to um, cards where you have taken a, a non-traditional kind of die set and used it on your cards. So I really love that sentiment going with that, it looks really cute. And I've just um, mounted it with the coral cardstock to match the coral card that I put behind the little hearts on the shutters. And so then you've got a lovely little matching set of a gift box and then the card to go with it. Then, this is going to be the gift box that we're going to create as the construction, but I did the matching card to go with it because I knew I was going to love how this turns out, um, and I do really love how it turned out. So we've got loads of these gorgeous flowers, which I just cut in three different card stocks, um, a couple of different pinks of the Texture Craft Perfect and then the uh, Glittery Craft Perfect as well. I've used white Nouveau drops in the centres, I've used Craft Card and um, the, I think it's called satin or silk card um, with this little sort of liney texture on it works really nicely um, for like a little bit of different kind of look to just normal mirror card and I've used it on the little dangly bits as well and I left these free and I've just realised I took photos of these and there's still two little bits <laughs> in that one never mind um, but I've left them sort of free as well so they've got a little bit of movement to them I couldn't resist using some of these little fall away pieces just in the background as well because there was quite a bit of white space um, so I've just done a few of them randomly placed and then I've done little Nouveau drops on there as well to sort of tie in the centres of the flowers I've layered up the um, gorgeous patterned design on the front of this and I had inked the pattern design with a little bit of walnut stain distress or no, just just distress ink not oxide um, and layered it up back onto the same craft card so it gave a little bit of difference in the colour and I've also done it on the little um, circle that I've used for the clock as well and I've used the larger hands on the clock too so it shows about two three o'clock on there probably about three o'clock I've done them a little bit wonky um, then we've got the lovely little window that opens with the little um, cuckoo inside as well which is really sweet and I've just backed it with that same um, satin kind of cardstock the the silky satiny finish I can't remember the name of it um, and then I've used another one of those sentiments off that stamp set to finish this off as well so it could either be a birthday card which I think goes quite well with a clock um, or it could be a new year card as well so here's to another year and then I finished it off with a load of the foliage which I cut from multiple different um, colours of green um, and then I've just scattered the flowers on as well so I really love how that card turned out and these two will be in a sped up card making video hopefully up tomorrow as well if you want to see how I made those but we will be putting together the matching gift box for this card and then I've done my little beach hut 
version. Now I did cheat and use a few dies from the Ahoy Sailor stamp and die set that came out in the Cyber Week deals from Tonic, but I just loved that die set so much. And once I um, thought about turning this into a little beach hut, I just had to bring in the little ship's wheel um, and make that like the focal point of the clock on this one. And then I've just done turned those sort of little doves into kind of seagulls sort of flying around and I've used the Ahoy on the back of there with the large lifesaver and I've wrapped some of this baker's twine around it to tie in the kind of grey theme and I've used the grey up here and on the roof and everything and then I've used that same baker's twine to add two of those um, bits that are supposed to go around the face of the clock but I think they kind of look like little lifesavers as the sort of dangling portions of this and as I put this down on my desk earlier I don't know if I've got anything to sort of show you what I was seeing but um, as you put it down it kind of looks like it's sitting as if it's got legs so you could actually have this sitting rather than hanging to especially when you've added these kind of things with um, baker's twine although when we add them with the cardstock we might be able to see if the cardstock would bend around like this to create this kind of effect but I think you could turn this into a kind of person or a character um, as well and have like little dangly legs coming down I think that would be a really cute idea for it too so um, yeah I think that gives a really sweet sort of little effect having those hanging down at the bottom of it as well um, and for these ones I just poked a hole in there and then made it a bit bigger and then put the twine through it and tied a knot on the inside so um, that is how I did this one and to get the stripey effect all I did was use one of um, the Nouveau alcohol pens and just do stripes across it the front and back I used I did it onto a panel and the side pieces I just did it straight onto the, the side pieces um, because I felt I was less likely to go wrong on the side pieces than I was on these sort of front pieces with the um, apex to them as well. Then the windows, I have coloured the card to be a sort of wooden colour and snipped off the shutters but you could have left the shutters as well. I was just going for um, a slightly more... I don't know, I suppose, I suppose masculine sort of feel, taking the hearts off of there. Um, but I thought that would be a nice little effect having the two big windows on either side and then you've got the Ahoy on the back, you've got the really sort of shingled roof with all the different layers and this goes the same way as well, it's um, the hidden locking mechanism just like the other one um, that I showed you before so you've got the little mechanism for opening on the inside and oh I haven't uh, trimmed that off I was gonna I was gonna play with the lengths of them but I actually quite like the lengths of them so all I was doing was tying a big knot trimming that off at the end of it and then pulling it back through and that's how I got them to sort of dangle down like that so that's how I did those bits inside and you've just got that in there you can see where I've coloured it with the pen I also coloured the roof with a grey pen so it, it sort of got a little bit more hidden than having the grey card on top of the white um, yeah, and I've just done uh, four of them and then cut in half, so you've got the two halves for each side and then the one going on the top which hides that locking mechanism in there as well. So it's a little bit fiddly with that top piece on to try and see how this um, locks together, especially if I'm trying to show it on camera. I kind of want it towards me to do it, but it just locks back together like that and then it looks really cute. So I really love this little beach hut version. So I'll be back in a second to show you the assembly of the one that is going to match this card. Okay, so for the main cuckoo clock, you need two of this piece with tape where I've indicated here, not on these two top pieces. These are just to, to support the roof. They don't actually um, need any adhesive on them unless you're just making it as a decoration and you don't want to be able to open it. Or you could actually um, figure out a closing mechanism for the bottom of it as well but I think the idea is that you might want to hang it and if you did the opening mechanism at the bottom uh, if you put something in it it might fall out with the weight of it um, but you could um, adapt it to open the bottom if you wanted to and then you need two of the side pieces now one of the boxes that I made I completely cut off this whole bottom piece and then used this glue tab to stick to here but the other one that I made I cut off both of these glue tabs and used those two large squares and put them together so I'm not sure uh, which way I'm going to do it this time I think we'll just decide when we get there um, but I've also cut some decorative panels I actually inked them 
while on top of the roof to give the roof a little bit of a design um, but these are going to be the side panels for my little cuckoo clock and then I think this kind of looks like engraved wood if you do it the same colour on the same colour and then I've also got the little sort of ridge tile um, to go on the top of the box as well and I've layered up two layers of it because I quite like the look of that um, so I've just done one, cut one in half and then stuck the little portions of it back on there underneath um, as my little sort of piece to hide the closure mechanism. Then to decorate the front, I've got my piece made up, which is the same as the one um, that I did on the card. I haven't stuck the bird on yet, but the bird is going to go inside when that is stuck onto the box. And then I've also got these gold pieces to go on the top here as well um, to make that look really lovely and pretty. And then I've also got, I cut four of these, but they're not actually symmetrical. So I'm not sure whether to stick, I think I will stick them back to back, even though it's not 100% symmetrical. Um, I don't think anybody's really going to notice that, um, that you can see through there. But yeah, I think I'm going to stick them back to back so they're a little bit stronger. And these are the pieces that we will put into these slots to hang down out of the bottom of the box. So first of all, let's add on the rest of these little decorative panels that I've cut. So they're all done and ready. So I like to add the glue with a fine tip bottle and just put like dots over the majority of the areas. It doesn't have to be on every single area, but just the majority of them. And then I tap it on my hand to get um, any excess glue off so it doesn't sort of squidge out from the sides. It does still happen a little bit, but not as much as if the big blobs were still on there. So there we've got that one stuck on and then do the same with this one and then tap the excess off and stick that one on as well. So this is the slightly smaller rectangle and it has a nice little border around the edge but if you use the sort of Moroccan or the latticey kind of tiled one and um, that's slightly bigger so you get even less of a little edge around there. You can see on this one it almost goes up to the edges of the side so you've got two different options with that and you could have even matted um, that larger rectangle underneath this one if you want to. Then we are going to, I think I'll use 3D foam to stick that on but we can stick this down flat and we don't want to put anything on the back of the windows because we want them to be able to open so we can put our bird inside. So, a bit of glue all over, make sure it's round the window but not on the little shutters. And then we can place that into position, press that down and then open the little windows and put our little bird inside. And he will fit in there completely with his tail as well, um, so he can completely hide inside there. Then we will stick these back to back, so they're already there and ready. So just the majority of the little places on there, and then tap that off and stick it to the back of this. So they're not 100% symmetrical. So it's not going to be a complete match on the opposite side, but I don't think anybody's really going to look at that that closely. We could trim a little bit of it off if we really want to, but I think that looks fine like that. I think it would just it just makes it look a little bit nicer if it's um, gold on both sides. You could have used the, I think it's called Majestic Golds, um, their pearlescent cardstock, because then you would have had um, the gold on both sides or if you really want to um, and you don't want to do this sort of offset kind of a look because they're not symmetrical you could also just colour the back with a gold pen as well one of those kind of ones that you um, shake up you know um, that kind of gold would give this sort of metallic finish to it so we've got those two ready for later and then I want to add the little um, roofs or the little decorative pieces for the roof. I just realised I didn't, I didn't cut any decoration for the back of this house so that's just going to be foliage and flowers when we come to that point. Um, but let's just add this little roof tile or the roof, well I don't know what that's called. Is it called an awning? Is it called the, is it like a baseboard behind the guttering? 
or is it just a decorative trim? I'm not really sure, but anyway, it looks pretty. And you could definitely turn this into a gingerbread house if you wanted to. So we'll just line that up along there and then cut some more foam for the other one. You can stick this flat if you want to as well. I just did it raised on my card and I want them to match. Okay. So we'll just do this on the back and we'll just add a lot of flowers on the back of it. Okay, then before we stick this together, we want to pre-fold these little tabs because they're a little bit, um, they're not too tricky, but you know, you don't really want to do this when the box is put together, get these little bits folded. Um, and you can use your glide folder or bone folder if you want to really get a, a crisp line on those. I find craft cards not too hard to get a crisp line on. So you just want to pre-fold all of them, they're all going away from us, so if we've got the professional edge towards us, they're all going away. Okay, then, um, so the way I made the beach hut one, no, the little winter cottage one, was that I cut um, this completely off here and then I stuck it to that glue tab. But the way I made the beach hut one is I cut off both the glue tabs and I actually moved these slightly further apart because that was kind of the way that they came together. So I think I'm going to go with that kind of method again. And I'm going to start by sticking the sides onto the box and then we will bring this round, the other side on and then, yeah, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll just go, I'll do it as I go along. So we take the one side off of the little cuckoo clock, then we want to line the bottom here, this bottom corner, up with the bottom corner there and make sure that goes along the side of the house. I presume you'll get instructions with this. I didn't get them, but I presume you will get instructions with this to help you put it all together. And then, I see, if you look here, see, that one does go completely along to there. So you can get away with just using that glue tab to stick the next one onto as well. But it just depends how yours comes together, whether you've been really accurate with where you've stuck it together and stuff. So don't worry if things don't match up with to be able to use this glue tab. It's perfectly fine just to cut the glue tabs off and stick the big flaps over each other as well. So I think I want to stick the other one of these on first. So we're going to again line up that corner and that corner with the two corners at the top and bottom of the house. So we've now got this kind of looking piece. Then I think if we bring the bottom across first, yeah I think maybe if we cut off this glue tab now because we're not going to need this one and then bring the, take the tape off and bring the bottom over. So we've got that portion of our house done now and then this is going to go on this side but we want to add the bottom pieces to our cuckoo clock and I had cut the slits in both because I wasn't sure how I was going to do it, whether they were going to line up perfectly and it would go through both of them but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my long bladed pair of scissors this time so it's neater because we will see this edge flap and I'm going to cut that glue tab off but then I'm going to attach these pieces through the slits on this one um, stick them down here and then that base will be stuck onto there and it will hide the joins. So let's go like this. Now because I've doubled these it's going to be a tight fit into that slot and I do want to make them two different lengths because I think that looks really nice having them the two different lengths. So I don't want it to be too short though. I did make them a little bit short on the card, but that was kind of the shortest that I could, or the longest that I could go. So if I just do them 
a couple of notches different like that I think that will look nice so what I think I'll do take a bit of red liner tape and put that along there then just bend them over onto that so that they're going to stay nicely and securely in place and then put another piece over the top just to ensure that they're going to stay yeah I think that's going to be a good uh, way of holding them in place actually I might bring out some more of that and put it on the rest of um, this as well so that we get a really nice good secure bond for the bottom of the box and it's going to be extra strong because we've got those two layers of cardstock on there rather than just the one layer as well so there are, I'm sure there are multiple different ways of putting this box together and um, I think I've done it a different way each time so you know you can either follow my way or make your own way up or follow the instructions if it's not the same as my way as well um, but yeah we're just going to add that one on there now and then we can stick that one on there and we've got the two pieces coming out the bottom of the clock so we're going to I'm going to do the side first so let's go with one side and doing the same thing as we did on the other side And then on this one, we can add this second side. And pinch from the inside. And now we, all we have to do is stick that base onto there. You see there's a slight little missing portion. I just feel like maybe this might be the better way to put it together rather than using the glue tab but the way they've done the die you have both options of whichever way you want to put it together so it's quite nice actually. You can either go with cutting a whole base off or you can just go with cutting um, the glue tabs off and using the two bases to make the full base so whichever way you want to do it you've got both options there and you haven't got to like awkwardly cut another piece and stick it on top to get it to work you've got both options within the die that they've given you which is nice okay so we can just pull that over the top and now we've got our finished base of our little cuckoo clock see the thing is now we can't stand this but yeah I suppose it wouldn't work as well for this if it was sitting um, but with the if you do it with the baker's twine on the legs it works really nicely for it to be sitting so how I did the baker's twine is I had both layers coming over like this I marked where I wanted them I took my pokey tool where did I put it here is the craft pick from tonic um, poked a hole where I wanted them it wasn't thick enough to get um, two uh, thicknesses of the baker's twine through it so I kind of wiggled it around a little bit and then I ended up taking a small ball tool and poking that to make that hole a bit larger and then I got one strand of baker's twine through and then I held the second one there and poked it and that's how I got it through because they're doubled up you see I wanted to attach the little rings like this so the baker's twine is doubled up going back into the house so that's how I managed to get them through the holes. So now we've basically got our little finished cuckoo clock other than decorating it. So now we can bring the top of this together. Slide, it's probably easier for you to see now with this little mechanism without the um, ridge tile kind of on yet. If I can actually do it and show it to camera at the same time. So you can slot those two together. The first few times you do it you end up with the roof sort of moving apart like this but the more you put it together and open it the less that happens and then you have your beautiful little um, cuckoo clock and you can see why they give you the little um, ridge tile to go in the middle because it kind of has a little gap where the roof goes together but if you fold those two down and then pick whichever side you want to stick the roof to I was using, oh don't do that because it will bend them I was using a little bit of um, foam tape to stick it on just because it gives it a little bit of um, depth then just might need to be a bit thinner than that 
and I just stuck this on one of these then peeled the backing off and then made sure that was in position and then just took my little top roof tile piece placed it on Oop. placed it on, pressed it in place and then you can go from underneath um, and squish it in place as well from underneath to get it to stick really well and then there you have your little mechanism that then opens and then you can hide it or hide the join when you put it back together with the little ridge tile Oops. Yeah. so there we go that's how you put the box together and then I'm going to decorate this one as well with lots of the greenery and the flowers in there too and I've got loads of it cut so this is literally how I go about decorating I just get loads of bits and pieces cut I'm obviously not going to use it all but it's nice to have it all there because you don't know if you want a lighter green a darker green or a mirror card of a specific type as you're decorating it so I didn't really put much on the clock on this one it was more the decoration around the clock so it's going to be a little bit of a different decorating um, kind of experience than with the other one and I don't want it to interfere with the actual window mechanism as well so that we can still open that and we're also going to want to like snip bits off too so that they're not too long and um, you know interfering with anything so I think something like this with those two flowers on for that first little piece maybe some more down here we could go with a little bit of dark green um, ivy and a bit of mirror card sort of fern they're really easy to sort of snip apart these dies just kind of think of it as real um, flower arranging and like snipping bits and pieces of foliage out um, makes it go nice and easily so we could do something like that and then maybe um, this one and a glittery one and then another light pink little small one on there as well and then I'll literally just go around the clock finishing that off and um, you know sticking the rest of these on um, and I think I might use pre-made uh, either just white gems or pre-made Nouveau drops because this one I did them uh, wet straight onto there but if I do that on the box I'm going to have to leave each side to dry individually so I think I will go with um, either gems or pre-made white Nouveau drops as well. So I'll stick this side down and then I'll come back to you. So I've still only just decorated that front side, um, I will do the rest of it because the back definitely looks very plain, um, but I just found some pre-made Nouveau drops and put them in the centres of the flowers as well. And actually I'll take this opportunity to show you the difference between putting a Nouveau drop straight onto a surface and pre-making it. So pre-making it I mean uh, taking a piece of like backing paper from some double-sided adhesive sheets or even like double-sided tape as well and then making Nouveau drops onto it and leaving them to dry and then they'll pick off of that and you can use them because this is doing them straight onto the flowers and you can see being on the glitter card it hasn't got a smooth edge because the glitter card is textured and they've also dried maybe a little bit flatter than they might normally do but these ones are pre-made ones that I made quite a while ago probably because I don't think I've made any that recently but they're pre-made little ones and you can see they have a lovely dome to them they're lovely and um, uniform as well and I also love pre-making them so that you could put them over um, like different levels for example if I wanted a few Nouveau drops on here I could have pre-made one and stuck it over the top of this detail and it wouldn't matter that that was like different levels there but if you put one on there and let it dry it would dry in a weird shape because it would sort of sink down in some areas and stay up in other areas so I thought I'd just show you that comparison um, while I had those things there as well so um, 
I hope you enjoyed this video looking at Tonic Showcase number 17, which is the Cuckoo Clock gift box. Um, I hope you enjoyed seeing how this one goes together, seeing a couple of matching um, cards to the gift boxes as well, and also seeing how you could incorporate your Ahoy Sailor um, stamp and die set from the Cyber Week celebrations um, into this Cuckoo Clock as well to turn it into like um, a nautical themed Cuckoo Clock too, or a little beach hut as well. So. I really hope you enjoyed the video, thank you so much for watching, don't forget to tune in for the sped up card making video of these two cards hopefully tomorrow and I will see you again in the next video, bye!